The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 135, NASDAQ up 81, S&P's up 16 and a half. And uh, welcome to Thanksgiving holiday trading week, folks. And it's uh, kicking off uh, just as a, a holiday week, uh, particularly Thanksgiving week, would uh, come. We just had the uh, NQs go from a price point of uh, uh, 83.45 up to 83. No, 80. Uh, 83.13 to 83.55 in about a heartbeat. Uh, gold, gold contract down 380, trading at 14.59. You get silver at uh, 16.95. Light sweet crude, $57.52 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10 year up three ticks, 127.17. The 30 year up 11 at 160.07. King dollar, King dollar down 43 ticks, 98.227. Euro is at 110. Yen is at 108.83. And the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. So, Tom O'Brien, what, what, what is happening out here, man? I just walked in and that. Uh, <laughs> Those futures just exploded topside. They sure did, man. We were higher pre-market. Looks like everybody's ready for some good Thanksgiving trading <laughs> higher, man. Um, I'm not sure if you're still booting up or not, but we just don't have your screen as well. Okay, as I'll get it up. No, I'll get it up. I just got a flat tire on the way in here, folks. And I'm glad I had enough time. But thank God for Uber and uh, Lyft, right? Well, speaking of Uber, let's jump to them this morning, man. Okay. So they lost their license in London. Yeah, and they're down 1.7 percent. They're trading at 29.06 right now. I have them at. They were trading down to a low at like 5 a.m. of 27.41. Pretty interesting to see how that's going to shake out. They had actually lost their license back in 2017 for the first time in London. They got a 15-month reprieve, I believe it was initially. Yeah. Um, when they appealed it, they got a two-month reprieve in September. But the ruling coming down, citing safety, con con excuse me, safety concerns, um, citing a um, repeated, repeated violations. Um, so that, of course, hitting the stock a bit this morning. Uber pretty weathered, of course, after their IPO. But quite a rebound we had last week. I have the chart up. Uber traded from 26.30 all the way up to $30.41 uh, and backing off a bit this morning. But again, I mean, the market kind of shaking it off, man. We hit a low of 27.50 and we're already up a buck 50 from that level, opening at 29.04. Yeah. And that's with, you know, the, what's the guy's name? That the, 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 the Kalanick, the Kalanick CEO. Sell. He's been selling into it. So bottom line is that's, <laughs> he, he, I don't think he, he's done selling yet. Um, Inside the uh, gold market, folks, so, so you got to take over inside the gold market. You've got, now, this is pretty intense. you got Kurt, Kirkland Lake is taking over Detour, and Kirkland right now is down to $7.77. Now, Kirkland has been the strongest gold equity in the marketplace, period. Uh, this has been, when you look at this chart, I mean, this is an incredible run. You just go back three years, the chart, chart it was $4.70, gets all the way up to 51 and... Uh, it takes over a detour, so DGT, no, D, yeah, D, DG, mm, no, no, detour, D, sorry about this, there we go, okay, so DGC, okay, so, uh, this is quite a takeover. I mean, the the market is saying uh, they didn't they didn't give uh, much to Detour. Detour is uh, trading at twenty three oh two. Now, what's going on here, folks? It was up to twenty four forty four. But watch if you see this. What's going on is that there's an all stock deal. So each time that Kirkland goes lower. You're not going to get the premium inside Detour. Isn't this way of vicious, Tom? I mean, it sure is, man. That's pretty intense. Uh, they're going to have a lot of gold, though. That's the real bottom line. So we'll see how this baby shakes out. Uh, the, the first news, of course, that came out was that 
they felt it was, uh, let's see, what kind of premium it was. Uh, so they, it was, particularly, it was valued at $4.9 billion, but that $4.9 billion, folks, had to do with uh, Kirkland being up at $45, not 39 So the ratio, exchange ratio, is 0.4343 of Kirkland common stock for each detour share. So you can see uh, the detour holders at this particular point, I don't think are probably that happy. Um, it is what it is, though, right? It's like, yep. it's, it's, yep. it's so intriguing, man. Um, and, you know, we'll see. This week is starting off. You know, you, you get a picture that you have the holiday week happening. Wednesday, noontime, traders are going to be leaving their desk. Yes. You know, Thursday, close. Friday, half a day. Uh, you can expect a lot of movement out here, folks. That's, that's how this thing is shaking out. So we'll see. And, of course, what, what ended up happening over the weekend, uh, what was so intriguing, no doubt, is that the so Hong Kong elections, Tom, you're talking yeah. about a landslide. Um, now, unfortunately, folks, they, they got a landslide going for the pro-democracy, but these people that get elected don't have any power. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, wow, you know. Like, yeah, and that's kind of what some of the protests are, right? I was trying to find the article, but it does. I mean, no, no matter what, power is supposed to be handed over to um, China. Is it 2047, I believe? So like 27 years or so forth. Yeah. And um, it sounds like a lot. That does not sound like a lot if you're a resident of Hong Kong. That's I mean, right. And you know, your I'm, age. Yeah. That's I was just going right. to say. I'm 39 right now. Right. I would not want to be 66 years old and live in China when you are used to living in a democratic, um, yeah. a democracy, not a democratic. Um, and let alone if you have children, right? Then you think, you know, yes. if you have small kids, they're going to grow up. And by the time they're in their 20s or 30s, they are going to be a resident of uh, a communist nation that, that does not allow freedoms. And so that's kind of what you see here. And like you said, so. Man, they got a lot of time to play out, and that's kind of part of the worrisome, you know, aspect of everything. Oh, yeah. That China has a lot at stake because if they start to protest for those freedoms, um, it, it would it would seem like it would only be a matter of time until people in China tried to access the same types of freedoms. But that has not happened yet. Yeah, and that's what they're worrying about, of course. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And then Schwab, folks, uh, you know, bottom line is is going to buy TD Ameritrade. You know, we had the rumors last last week. Bob, now the bottom line is that you get an agreement. Uh, and let's see. Oh, this is an all stock too transaction. Yes. Look at that. Yep. Twenty six billion. Is that a lot of stock? Twenty six billion. Yeah, slightly, right? AMTD. <laughs> so let's go look at. I think the the market's liking this one. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah, and all the movement really took place right on that uh, early Thursday morning announcement. Right. Um, that was pretty much assured, and you had both of the shares trade higher, but both of them backed off a bit from the the peak exuberance you could call it that it had, but. Uh, you know, TD Ameritrade, for instance, was trading around $41 before that stock broke in terms of Wednesday's close. It made it all the way up to $53 it did. We're currently at 49.30, up 2.5% today from Friday. And then Schwab, SCHW, that was trading at about 44.75. Made it all the way up to 51.81, but now trading at 47.48 right now. Pretty wild. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up 142. Nasdaq's up 84. S&P's up 17. We're coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up uh, 139. Nasdaq's up 85. S&Ps are up uh, 17 and a half. And uh, it looks like the whole world, Tom, is buying small caps today. This is quite a move uh, in the small cap uh, index. So let's go take a look at the Russell 2000, which has been the weakest indice. Um, bottom line is that Russell 2000 topped out, folks, in July of 2018. Uh, this morning, you're up 18 bucks. You're going after the high of 1608.80. We've hit 1607.09 right now. So it's it's pretty intriguing uh, watching this thing, you know, no action, no action. And then all of a sudden, the whole world looks like they're buying it right now. <laughs> you know, so. They're buying a lot today, man. Have you seen not to jump over? How about oil? Um, talk about some volatility, man. I'm not sure what's going on in that oil market. Let's take but a look. We uh, had upward and downward price movement to the tune of like 70 cents. So 8.20 a.m. this morning, we're trading at $57.88. 9 o'clock, we're trading at 57.22. It's about 65 cents we drop off. From 9 o'clock until 9.40, we trade up 80 cents to $58 on the dot. From 9.40... To 10 a.m., we trade down 70 cents to 57.31, and now we're back up at 57.66, man. Yeah, they'll be moving. That's you know, holiday week, man. Yes, you I know, thought the same. Maybe that's... a little bit of a light market liquidity wise, yep. and and some fast moves. But boy, oh boy, I'm looking at a five minute chart here, and there's 50 cent movements in five minutes all over the place on this chart. No doubt. So let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities. We'll find out we get volume in you know, a couple, couple more hours inside this marketplace out here. Uh, but when we take a look at where we stand, uh, you know, 1030 out here, the, you got, well, it looks like medicines, the medicines company, that's going to get taken over by Novartis. That's up by uh, $18, $15. Uh, Chesapeake Energy, that's still in trouble. That's 58 cents. You got, uh, and, oh, NVIDIA's got caught a bid, man. That's up nine bucks, trading at two nineteen. You get Tesla up eight dollars. <laughs> Let's go look at Tesla, man. Tesla is something else, right? Uh, yeah. And I saw you sent me the the article. I'd seen it over the 
weekend in terms of constant updates from the man Musk himself uh, with the amount of pre-orders, what right. do we call them? Um, but the devil's always in the details, right? Yes. How much do they have to put up? $100. $100. Right. Is it refundable? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, 200,000 orders, you know, that's a remarkable number, man. Uh, even at $100, that's $20 million they just took in. It is remarkable cash flow-wise what they do sometimes with these orders. Right. But uh, $20 million is not a lot of money to a company like Tesla, and it's definitely not an indication of what might happen when that thing actually goes to market two years from right now. Um you know, because what will happen is investors know, investors, consumers, I should say, know, you know, the people putting up those hundred dollars. All that does is that gets you in line. Right. So a hundred dollars is not a lot of money if you if you're considering it at all. And no. then you make a You make a decision in two years. But, you know, um, there's a lot of people who did the same thing when they had a thousand dollars up for the Model 3. Yes. And they ended up canceling that and getting that thousand dollars back. So pretty interesting that this time Tesla's only asking for a hundred dollars. Why do they do that as opposed to the thousand they wanted for the Model Three? Oh, right? There's no doubt, man. There's no. They there's want no to inflate doubt. those numbers, so be aware. Yeah, he he's he's a marketer. There's no doubt. I man. agree, man. That's you know, <laughs> but it's it's it should you should listen to the fact that they allowed you to have a pre-order for a hundred versus a thousand on the Model Three, and that's oh. that's that they could boost those numbers to be a marketing uh, a marketing platform, and they got it done, man, because the stock is up this morning, and um, they've pulled back. I mean, what are we? Because we it hit hard, yeah, it's pulling back a little bit, but you know it was trading about 355 before the announcement of the Cybertruck. Okay. You hit a low of 330. Yeah. And you were back up to 350 pre-market this morning, man. That's intense. Exactly. It is, and even even with the pullback, you're still up 2.7 percent on that number. Um, so pretty cool. You can debut a truck like that, smash the windows when you didn't think they were going to smash, and uh, release a truck that. Not many people think is designed too well for the consumer market, and still they're okay. You gotta love it. So we take a look at the dollar, folks. Dollar, you know, bottom line, trying to get the top of its range out here, and uh, top of the range, well, top of the small range would be 98,447. We got to 98,381, and that kind of gave it up. Now it's going to be interesting here, this this whole week uh, with the dollar, folks, because the dollar did have strength on Friday. You know, we went from 97,836 to 98. 305. Uh, if we go over and we take a look at the euro, of course, what ends up happening, the euro is 60% of the dollar index. You know, euro basically is flat, but you can see on Friday that thing went south in a big way. Uh, if we go take a look at the pound, the British pound, which there's going to be action because uh, before we know it, we're going to be dealing with December, and that's when these dates are going to be coming up for the election, and we're at 129 right now. So it's the euro, I mean, the, the pound is staying at the top of its range, you know, and that was quite a move, you know, from October 9th, where we were at 121, we all get up to that 129, and then if we go over to the yen, and just take a look at the yen, the yen has more to do with uh, where gold wants to go right now, and we're laying out at uh, 108.83, you know, so yeah, that's, you know, the... the of course, the, the, the number to keep your eye on there is that 109.32. The end looks a little weak right now. You know what's interesting, Tom? And uh, yeah, So let's go look at the Hang Sang. So the Hang Sang, this is where I think, folks, you know, there's still going to be some uh, HSI. There's still going to be some real problems going forward in Hong Kong. The reason I'm saying that is that, you know, like when you look at the aspect of, you know, I think... Mm -hmm. Protest-wise, it's going to slow down and stuff, okay? Because, you know, they got so many elected. But, you know, so we're up $397 last night, right? You got to 27114 but it didn't hold the last swing high just of last week, which is 27093 It's like, that's saying that, hey, man, this thing's not over. <laughs> you know? That, yeah. That the, the market itself, folks, in the world market, because the world market's, you know, throwing money into Hong Kong, they just didn't throw enough in, you know, so. Man, and it's, I mean, we, we already talked about it. Not enough. I mean, you could talk about, we could spend a week full of shows talking about the Chinese markets and what's at play in the Hong Kong market specifically. Yeah. But no, I, no matter what happens, I, there's going to be no resolution there for a long time because 
the protesters are not going to have anything resolved until they have their own independence forever, I would say, some of them. Right. And there's no such thing. Right. And China's never going to allow their own independence, at least not where anything is. I'm talking about, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 years down the road if, they, if China thinks that's the only way to make sure that none of this spreads over to mainland China. Right. But if that happens, then how does it not spread to mainland China? Right. Right? Yeah. So... So this is going to play out for some time, man, not to chuckle, but it's it's so, so um, such a deep, deep topic of, of freedom that, you know, how does that resolve? And you have a shooting NDP over there yeah. um, while this is playing out. So it's dicey stuff. Man. It is. It's that right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be safe when you're driving out there. Gobble, gobble, gobble. That's lots, right. Lots of, good, lots of good turkey, man. It's time to come right back, folks. Dow is up 139. Now it's up 89. S&P's up 17. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 148. Nasdaq's up 93. S&Ps are up 18. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see right under featured content something brand new. Our man Tom O'Brien uh, came up with a new concept, and it's a beautiful thing. You got, we got lots of Tom O'Briens, man. I know. Well, they, they know the difference. <laughs> they sure do. It's just, it, I'll tell you, we can say this story about all the Tom O'Briens in my family later, folks. But, but anyway, Tom. There's a lot in that Boston area. That's exactly. For sure. 
Tommy's come up with uh, a concept here. Pretty cool, folks. Morning market report. Uh, so tell us about it, Tom. Yeah, so I put one out on Friday as well, and the, the goal is just to provide some more information about what's going on in the market, whether it's pre-market, whether it's closing market. So this morning, just put together um, just kind of a report of what's driving the market action, right? I mean, we had a bunch of headlines, and this is even on a slow Thanksgiving week, man, yeah. let alone I'm excited to do these during earnings or what's happening. But, you know, you have the Charles Schwab deal. You have Uber losing their license. We haven't even talked about yet that we'll get into LVMH confirming to acquire Tiffany for $16.2 billion. Yep. Um, we got Disney with their, we haven't talked about this yet either, um, Frozen 2, they open in the U.S. That's their animated movie. $127 million in the U.S. That's the third biggest open for an animated series ever. Wow. And they actually took in, and this is where, these are just the highlights. We'll click on a second. You have Elon Musk. You have uh, Upgrade for NVIDIA. So you click on the front page link, we get into it, and um, we get charts in there about pre-market action. So this was published just prior to about 9 a.m. this morning. You got the Ameritrade chart in there. You got Schwab on their deal. You got the Uber losing oh. their license in London. Yeah, and Morgan Stanley upgrading the in NVIDIA. That's why it's up nine bucks, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. we got a big one there as well. And then Tiffany um, up big on their act. Uh, being acquired by LVMH. So just kind of some of the stories to keep on your radar as the market's opening. Nice. I'm going to jump over because um, I have Fridays up here as well. So this was the market recap. Of course, kind of old news as of this morning. But you can find the links to this on our social media as well, whether it's our Twitter account, whether it's our Facebook account. You want to check this out. Um, get on over to those. And so you just kind of had a market rack up. And Friday was interesting, man, in terms of the streaks that we had that got snapped. So the S&P lost 0.3% for the week. That had snapped a six-week winning streak. Yeah. The Dow was down about a half a percent. First pullback for a week in five. And the NASDAQ ended a seven-week winning streak last week, even though markets finished in the positive for Friday. Sure. Um, and then I just had a bunch of charts, of course, a big day for Friday for Tesla. That's the day they unveiled it. We had some pictures of the Cybertruck up there. Tesla, the man Elon Musk truck, in front man. of his broken yeah. windows. Um, and then just a lot of the charts that really moved for the week. Um, we had some earnings, of course. You had Macy's in there. We had uh, Nordstrom. We got their chart up in there. So check it out right on the front page of TFN. We'll have more of those. You can check over there, whether it's in the morning, whether it's a quick recap of what happened at the end of the day. But I encourage everybody, and that's just you know completely free reports that we're going to be publishing out there to keep you in tune with what's happening in the market, man, as yeah. things are that's, all, that's really awesome, man. I mean, it's a very quick way, folks, okay? You come over in the morning, come over in the afternoon and see what's going on. You know, in the morning, of course, what may be going on in the afternoon, what went on. So pretty cool, man. Great job, Tommy. Thanks, man. Yeah. So to, to finish up one of them, I'll just scroll down. One of the things that really, you know, we've been talking about Disney a lot, right? With yes. the Disney Plus. Whoops, we'll get back into there. Um, but how about, so they, the headline is that they opened in the U.S. with $127 million, third biggest domestic opening for an animated film ever. Internationally, the film sold $223 million in tickets. So they took in $350 million in three days in an animated movie, man. Um, and, you know, the barely moving the ticker for Disney this morning. You're up about a half a percent. The markets are up about a half a percent. Um, <laughs> so it's remarkable when you combine the fact that they're going to be a streaming giant. They signed up 10 million people and basically within 24 hours of their streaming service starting. Now, they took signups for a good month or two ahead of that but still 10 sure. million and then you add in this type of numbers that they push out because guess what netflix doesn't have this going on right and then this is in the library this is yeah. forever exactly this is forever so it's, it's like it's remarkable yeah. to see in the long term how uh, netflix competes when you have you know this type of because i even know frozen isn't frozen i believe frozen's elsa or is it not um is it i don't know i think it is okay but, you know, uh, being almost a 40-year-old guy, I'm familiar with animated titles yeah. and, and oh, yeah. with no children because they're that – the content brand is that strong um, and just another kind of accolade on oh, Disney. It's, it's on a, yeah. a feel-good movie. Hey, man, you talk about a feel-good movie. Um, on Netflix last night, right, so they got a new movie, folks. That It's a Netflix movie. It's Night Before Christmas, but it's Night, K-N-I-G-H-T. It's okay. A, it's 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 great. It's a it's one of these feel good movies. What's about is a, a night in the uh, 1339 in Norwich, uh, England, gets uh, time traveled 
to uh, Ohio, uh, December 21st, 20, 2019. It's just, okay, it's, good. If you want to feel good like movie? Christmas season, man. The, it, the, yeah. the movie season is coming. We got three days until Thanksgiving, and, and uh, you know, the Christmas trees are coming up. I'm seeing them on social media, man. Everyone's getting ready. The holiday lights are up already in the neighborhood. Um, you got to love some good, feel-good Christmas movies. Good. Totally. I'll check it out, man. I will. Yeah, you, 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 you'll love it, man. Nice. So check this out, folks. This just came across the tape, man. This is early for a sellout of, uh, you can see this, this economy is going, this cash flow is going. Fox says Super Bowl ads sold out at a record 5.6 million each. Uh, Fox uh, Sports has sold out its inventory of Super Bowl ads after pricing 30-second spots at 5.6 million. Uh, they sold 77 national spots. Uh, the unit finished wow. all 77 national spots on Friday. His neck wild, man. This is like November 25th, right? Um, that is. And it's interesting. So you get a discount if you buy more of them. Um, every ad sold for more than $5 million bucks, though. Pretty remarkable. Except for one company's longstanding bulk ought to have kept it priced under that threshold. Uh, that's that's got to be Bud, right? I, I was saying yeah. the same thing. It's got to be Budweiser, man. The Super Bowl, the most watched TV event of the year. Uh, ad sales typically fluctuate based on the health of the economy. Let's see. Both became tailwinds of Fox during this sale. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's huge. And, you know, one of the other things, just to bring it back to that, you know, streaming platform, um, when is Netflix or Amazon going to try and start paying for that type of a service, man? Because it seems like the we just talked about content is king with Disney. Yeah. Well, the you know, yeah, you know, Frozen 2 is quite a name, but guess what? The NFL, there's nothing like the NFL in terms of needing yeah. to watch it right now. There's no such thing as, you know, right. a library. Um, if I, I just can't wait to see when they start to try and get into that, whether it's even Facebook, you know, Facebook could Facebook TV. What's what's to stop Zuckerberg from saying, you know what, man, we're, we're going to try and corner the Facebook, the uh, NFL market and make everybody log on to Facebook to watch the NFL these days. Um, yeah. You just uh, it's it's bound to happen because that brand is strong as any. And it's kind of remarkable that all these streaming giants haven't tried to wade into that just yet. And the NFL, they're aware of, you know, they have such a good thing going right now. They don't want to they don't have to risk things like, you know, Prime does. You know, the last thing they want is they give it all to Prime and then the ratings drop off or something like that. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 150. NASDAQ is up 99. S&P is up 18. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow uh, right now up 144. NASDAQ up 101. S&P's up 18 and a half. And, you know, the Fed uh, repo market, folks, okay, they're going to be putting, uh, the Fed's going to be putting lots of money into this uh, economy uh, coming into the end of the year. And uh, so November 25th, and this thing was oversubscribed last night. So, and they, what the Federal Reserve did, folks, is that they extended uh, the repo market to 42 days. So let's see. So does that bring you into the first of the year, yeah, Tom? Yeah, it does. Interesting. Okay. It Just sure about. Does. That's what it did. And that's, that's what they're trying to do, folks. Cause, so what happens? Okay. So the Federal Reserve New York operations to inject cash into the financial system over the end of the year was oversubscribed on Monday, indicating a thirst for year end funding. Market participants submitted 49.05 billion and bids for the Fed's 42-day term repo operation. Uh, that was more than the $25 billion that was offered. So picture, folks, they were only offering $25 billion. The bottom line is that the banks need $49 billion. Uh, you know, I suspect what we're going to see is that they'll, they'll up the deal and they're going to make sure there's plenty of money in there. But this is really kind of intriguing because what does happen is that when you're going into that market, too, folks, the, the, the bottom line, the... The other banking structures are looking at the banks that are going in there and say, okay, why do they need so much cash? <laughs> well, yeah. you know, so uh, we'll, we'll see where that's going to shake up. But that's quite an always description rate. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, it is what it is coming into the end of the year, too, I guess. That's what that comes down to. So uh, Bitcoin. Well, let's uh, take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's trading 7241 XBT. Uh, Bitcoin took a hit last week. Uh, no doubt. Now you're going to have slow markets. Uh, we get down to 65. Look at this thing. 65.30 today. Or maybe last night. It's hard to tell. Put this on. Yeah, I tell you, you know, this thing's got to come back inside like 7,700 to get back in the higher range. So. Yeah, you can always hide that lower panel down there if you want to expand yeah. that. Right click and hide. Um, just so we can see the chart. I'm just yeah. following myself. There we go. What was that gap? Let's see. Oh, this is interesting. So there's a gap at 64.26, and we went to 65.30. Yeah. Now, I would only hesitate that, you know, gaps are everywhere in this yes. market because they're not really true to the story that, you know, Bitcoin does not operate on NYSE right. hours, right? right. <laughs> if anything, then, they then, operate yeah, totally. on weekends and European markets and uh, I heard a cool story this morning. We'll have to see if we can find the story. Maybe you can find it this afternoon. Talking about a server farm over in Russia. Um, heard it on Bloomberg that's that's pushing out tons of Bitcoin. And the reason why is that they're right next to a hydroelectric. The water. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Providing the most, uh, the cheapest, some of the cheapest electric in the world. 
and they got, I believe, 20,000 right now Bitcoin units that are pushing out Bitcoins, and they said that they can multiply that times three times if they want. Um, I mean, that's it was just an interesting story, as, you know, but that's as the price continues to, to fall, man. Yes, uh, and that's what, what, what does happen, folks, is that there's no doubt the uh, energy is one of the biggest deals out there inside the Bitcoin market. So if you can basically harness the energy to, to push the service to pump out the Bitcoin, that's, yeah. that's when, you know, you, you really do pretty because well. Because you are mining it, you are creating value, and the only question is how much is it costing you to, to mine, quote-unquote, yes. or create those Bitcoins. So uh, energy, electric, so basically your only cost outside of uh, buying a computer that, that is fast enough to do it. Yep. Water, huh? Isn't that wild, man? That is. I, I was just, yeah, my I got ears it. perked Beautiful. up when I heard Let's, that, right? Okay, yeah. I got it right now. Let's see. Let's pull this over. Come on. The only other thing, I wonder how that plays out because I wouldn't trust anything in Russia, man. But <laughs> maybe once you mine them, you can send them out of Russia quick enough that they can't, uh, they might be able to stop a small amount. But, you know, it's not like you have a gold mine in Russia, right? Where, which I wouldn't trust for a moment. You got a Bitcoin mine where you're able to, to funnel them out uh, the moment that they're mined and created, maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure, but. So here's there a we story. Go. It was opened a year ago. But has already won clients from all over the world, including the U.S., Japan, and China. Look at this. Most so that's and that was the headline that that I said. Whoa, who's putting their server farm in in Russia from the U.S. or Japan? Maybe China, I guess. And then I said, Oh, it's Bitcoin miners. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the company rents a building near the Brask Aluminum Plant, the world's largest single aluminum smelter. It was built by the. USSR in the 60s, along with nearby hydropower plant, as energy is the largest cost in aluminum smelting. Yeah, for sure. That's why Pretty Alcoa cool. always basically was losing money. Look uh, at that picture, man. That's awesome. You should see that if you're not, if you're happening in your car, folks, it's three racks, just server on top of server on top of server. So to put it, three stories of racks, yeah. <laughs> not three racks, right, three right. stories of racks. I mean, I think they got 10 racks in every story, um, and it looks like a manufacturing plant as they would, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they Long. got on-site engineers working 24-7 to keep things running. On top of the supply, another thing that makes... Bratsk, an ideal place for crypto, is the climate that's freezing because of all that heat. So it's the Siberian climate. Um, low temperatures because those computers are heating up. Then you got to pay to cool them down. Um, pretty cool, man. Isn't that wild, man? It really yeah. is. Oh. Huh? Okay, I imagine so we'll be hearing says, more about says, that. Russian law doesn't recognize crypto mining. Uh, is it, okay, so they're saying it's not engaged in the mining itself. It only provides equipment to the data center and technical services, meaning its business is legal. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, that's yeah. only until Putin says it's not. Exactly, yeah. And one, one of his oligarchs, anyway, is the one that came up with this. Right. Five years ago. Pretty, there's just so many different ways that these things are basically coming online. It's pretty amazing, man. It's yeah, because you hear all the stories of when Bitcoin was at 20,000, right? People creating their own mining operations. Yep. Those really went to the wayside when Bitcoin collapsed. Yes. But that's a lot of units picking up some of the slack over there. Oh, yeah. Um, of, of some of the units that got done away with and are probably never coming back for people who were building them as Bitcoin went to 20,000 and then lost a, a lot of money as it collapsed. Wild. Yeah. Absolutely wild. So small caps, uh, they're still holding up, folks. The bottom line is that uh, you get the IWM right now that's going after its last swing high. Actually, I already took it out. The swing high out here was uh, 160.99. You're at 161.20 right now. You pull this back. And, oh, I see the whole, it's the, the top of the range. Oh, we're right there. Okay, so... It's trying to take the whole top of the range out. The top of the range is $161.11. You're at $161.20. The top of the range was established, folks, uh, the week of May 10th uh, of this year. So we'll see. It's been basically in this consolidation going all the way back to October of 2018. So we're talking, what, uh, 12 months. 
Hey, if we can look when we come back yeah. from the break, we'll finish it up. How about Hasbro? They got an upgrade, I think, as well. Toy oh. season coming into Christmas, man. Um, they're trading positive today. Yeah. And you know what? I did um, get a little help that it was Elsa and Anna is frozen. Remember oh, those, those names? Yeah. They'll, so. be, they'll be selling them at Hasbro, right? They uh, sure will, it. exactly. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average Average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow up 88, NASDAQ up uh, 101, that s and is up 18. That's a 1.1% move on the NASDAQ top side, folks. Uh, six tenths of 1% on the S&Ps and one half a percent in the Dow Industrials. And so, I think we got a new high for a print on the S&P and the NASDAQ, I believe. Oh, I saw the, the headline. Oh. I, now, the S&P, I believe, had a barely higher print pre-market one of the mornings i remember 3132 being out there i'm looking at the december contract of 3129 but maybe yeah. that's an uh, intraday print uh record for the s p yeah no there's no doubt it's why i just brought up the cash the cash is over that 3127 that was the number we're at 3131 we hit 313150 another day in the life man and no doubt so <laughs> hasbro yeah i mean hasbro is gonna you know bottom line is that it's a monster company there's no two ways about that um, you know, they, it seems like whether we're talking cartoon characters, um, you know, the, the same type of deal, meaning they have so many, so much other content that has been around forever. 
Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a high-end consolidation. I mean, it hit, it hit a high out here, I think, five months ago of 126. You're at 98. That was they had quite the pullback, right? What was yeah. that on a, a week or a day that they broke? I remember the news. There was something reported there. Maybe it was their earnings that came out. Um, yeah, they really had quite a setback. But you know, I imagine that they'll they'll be around for the long haul. We'll see what price they'll be around at. But totally, because you know, if I remember anything, Tom, right? So picture, folks, if you go back twenty years, right? The mantra on the, like Wall Street was that no, you know, Hasbro. Things are going digital. It's not going to be sure. around. It's like, guess what, man? It's more than around because of the aspect of how many movies Disney come out with that they, they make the licensing deals, right? You yep. know, pretty the amazing. kids watch them on the iPad, and then they got to have the dolls too, right? Yeah, totally. Yep. Stay right there, folks. we got TD Ameritrade coming up next. And I'm man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Say, wait, I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Love you, man. Thanks, man. Okay, have a great one. You too. Stay right there, folks. TD coming right up.